Hello and welcome, my name is Kaylee Jo and I make content all about my experiences as a theater educator as well as comparison videos between full length and junior musicals which you can find on my channel. For those of you that don't know, a full length Broadway show is usually between two and two and a half hours long and is meant for more experienced and older performers. The junior versions of these shows usually fall between an hour and an hour and 15 minutes long and they have removed anything that might be too difficult or inappropriate for a younger performer. Today we are going to jump into the magical world of Shrek the Musical and its junior counterpart. Shrek the Musical is based on a well-loved series of DreamWorks animated films which began in 2001 and is based on a novel published by William Steg in 1990. The musical premiered on Broadway in December of 2008 to eight Tony nominations and one win for Best Costume Design. Despite really positive reviews from audience goers, the show simply couldn't survive because it was incredibly expensive to produce. So after more than 400 performances, the show closed in January of 2010. The musical version is incredibly similar to the plot of that 2001 film, but in my opinion, it makes the characters much more well-rounded because it gives us more background information on the childhoods of Fiona, Shrek, and Farquaad. Without further ado, let's jump into the comparison of Shrek the Musical and Shrek Jr. Please note that there are a lot of changes that need to happen to shrink a show from two and a half hours to just a little over an hour, so I am not going to go over every single change, but I am going to cover what I consider to be the most important ones. Both productions begin with Shrek's parents sending their young child off to face the big, bright, beautiful world at the very young age of seven. So it's time! to go away. In the full version, we also get a glimpse of Fiona's parents as they send her off into the world as well. The junior version does not introduce Fiona quite yet and instead jumps straight into Shrek's adulthood and the fairy tale creatures being dumped in his swamp with the song, The Story of My Life. One change made to that song is the Big Bad Wolf's line about being a hot and tranny mess. I think it's changed to something like a fashion mess in a granny dress instead. Shrek is determined to travel to Duloc and give Farquaad a piece of his mind for dumping these fairy tale creatures. In the full version, the fairy tale creatures would usually send Shrek off with the song, the goodbye song, but that is cut from the junior version. Pretty quickly, Shrek meets Donkey, and I am incredibly sad to share that the junior version cuts Donkey's song, Don't Let Me Go. I understand why they had to do this, because it is technically a very difficult song to sing. Don't let me go, don't let me go, don't let me go. but I wish so badly that they could have done a shortened or reduced version in the junior show. And likely for time purposes, the junior version cuts out all of the road trip banter between Shrek and Donkey, and instead we immediately land in Duloc. What's Up Duloc is actually broken into three separate parts, beginning with the classic Welcome to Duloc tune. Welcome to Duloc, such a perfect town. And then Farquaad comes out. Keep in mind that Shrek and Donkey are not on stage at this point. And so Farquaad comes out with Gingy, the gingerbread man, and we have that torture scene with that classic not the gumdrop buttons line. Ow! Not the buttons! This is a little different than the full version where the Genji torture scene actually takes place before any of the What's Up Duloc song. After that, we move through What's Up Duloc part two, which is largely Farquaad's solo. Things are looking up here in Duloc. And then very quickly, Donkey and Shrek are sent on their quest to rescue the Princess Fiona in exchange for removing the fairy tale creatures from Shrek's swamp. Part three of What's Up Duloc is a very short reprise sung by Farquaad and the Dulocians, and then they exit. And then Shrek and Donkey are exiting the stage and they say something to the tune of, hmm, I wonder what this princess is like. And Shrek says, huh, that must be a cue for a flashback. And then we jump into Fiona's I Know It's Today. We get to meet three versions of Fiona. We have young Fiona, teen Fiona, and adult Fiona as they share all about her childhood and her experiences up until this point. The Fionas disappear and we see Shrek and Donkey traveling through a field of sunflowers. This is where we have that famous dialogue scene, Ogres Are Like Onions from the original 2001 movie, and then Donkey gets his song, The Travel Song. Sing a song, yes, the travel song, when you gotta go somewhere. Keeping pace with the full version, Shrek and Donkey arrive at the Dragon's Keep to meet the lady herself with the song Forever. Oh, boy, no. 
Shrek rescues Fiona and she sings a shortened version of This Is How A Dream Comes True. They finally get a moment to pause after all of that happens and Fiona demands that Shrek removes his helmet. Whenever he does, she realizes that he is an ogre and not the Prince Charming that she was expecting, but it just so happens that the sun is setting and so Fiona demands that they need to camp right now. I don't think I mentioned this yet, but in the junior version there are these characters called storytellers who pop up just a few times throughout the show, but they give some kind of key plot points. So in this moment the storytellers pop up and say something about how Fiona's keeping a secret. That secret being the fact that she's been under a curse since she was a little girl that causes her to turn into an ogre during the nighttime. But of course Shrek and Donkey don't know that yet. Now is whenever we're getting into a lot more of the changes. So usually in the full version this is whenever Shrek would sing his solo song Who I'd Be, but that is tragically cut from the junior version. I say tragic because this is one of my favorite songs in musical theater, and I also think this song is really, really important for Shrek's characterization and the relationship between him and Donkey. Who I'd Be is Shrek opening up to Donkey about all of the other things he wished that he were instead of an ogre, which is why I'm really bummed that we didn't get to keep some variation of this in the junior version. I'd be a hero, and I would scale a tower to save a hothouse flower, I'd carry her away. I mean, I would be fine with losing the ogres are like onions dialogue scene if it meant we even got a reduced version of who I'd be in the junior show. I would like to take this moment to have just a little aside. So, I have done a few of these videos now where I compare full length versions of musicals to junior versions and it never fails. I have somebody comment who will say something to the tune of, oh, we did the junior version of this show, but my director just added this song back in. Folks, you can't do that. It is a direct violation of your contract between your group and the publisher of the musical. I know that it feels like you should be able to add songs back in, especially whenever they were already in the full version, but unfortunately this is considered copyright infringement. So just FYI, if you've been a part of a production that has done that, unless they have gotten express permission from the publisher, which can be done, but seldom is, it's considered copyright infringement. So just a little PSA. Anywho, I digress. The on track is cut because in the junior version there is only one act and not two, so there's no reason for an on track in the junior version. Shrek and Fiona have a brief conversation following the song Morning Person, where they have a duet called I Think I Got You Beat. In this song, they are fighting over whose childhood was worse. This ends in a belching farting competition, which is always a hit with any kids in the audience. Once that song ends, there is zero dialogue between it and the next song. So in the full version, this is usually where they would have the Ballad of Farquaad, which gives us a little more information on Farquaad's childhood. My daddy was a minor, so he wasn't much around. But that is cut from the junior version, and instead we move straight into Donkey's song, Make a Move. Making goo goo eyes over their food. They need my help here in setting the mood. In Donkey's song, Make a Move, he encourages Shrek to tell Fiona how he really feels. Unfortunately, he doesn't get a chance to because one, he's nervous, and two, because the sun is about to set, so Fiona has to run off. That night, Donkey runs into Fiona while she is in ogre form, and she tells him everything. She also tells him that she doesn't understand how anybody could ever love such a big, stupid, ugly ogre. Ever love a beast so hideous and ugly? Princess and ugly? Don't go together. The thing is, she's talking about herself. She doesn't know how Shrek could ever love somebody like her, but Shrek is rounding the corner as this is said, and all he hears is big, stupid, ugly ogre, and he thinks that Fiona is talking about him because, of course, he doesn't know that she's also technically an ogre. Yeah. You have to love romances fueled by miscommunication. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. But, spoiler alert, Shrek and Fiona don't die at the end. So that's nice. What is not nice is that the junior version cuts yet another pivotal characterization moment for Shrek with the song When Words Fail. In the song, he expresses how he isn't very good with words, and so he's worried that Fiona won't be able to tell how he really feels about her. There is this beautiful line in the song, and it goes, If words fail, so you know what I mean. If words fail, She'll just take my hand. She sees me like no one else has. Hmm. 
This is pivotal characterization and plot development here, folks. Usually the song happens right before Shrek walks in on Donkey and Fiona's conversation, making that moment where he overhears her and walks away extra heartbreaking. I'm admittedly more fired up about the cutting of When Words Fail than other songs because it just so happens that this is my husband and I's song. This is precious. Ah, mm -hmm. So right before we started dating, my husband recorded himself singing this song and sent it to me, and it was kind of his way of telling me that he had feelings for me. Adorable, I know. Oh boy. Please go find yourself another musical theater obsessed person to spend your life with. I promise there is never a dull moment. Anywho, moving on. Fiona wakes up the next morning ready to tell Shrek how she feels with the song Morning Person Reprise, but Shrek is having none of it because of what he thinks he heard the night before. So he happily sends Fiona off to be with Farquaad and he goes to return to his swamp. Oh look, a powerful ballad for Shrek to express his true feelings in this very pivotal moment in the plot. But not for me. Or not. Ouch. In the full version, Shrek has a song titled Build a Wall, where he expresses kind of his renewed vigor for this desire to cut everybody out of his life and just focus on himself because that way he can't get hurt. What a fool to think she might love me. I open my heart and let her walk through. Why can't you let the title character have just one solo song? to express his character. <sighs> anyway, Shrek and Donkey get into an argument about Donkey coming home with Shrek because Shrek is frustrated by what Donkey said the night before, and Donkey says something to the tune of, there you go again, always pushing people away, even Fiona, and she even loved you. The fairy tale creatures burst on stage in the middle of this conversation, upset about being evicted from the swamp, and this is where we get the song Freak Flag, which is a great ensemble number. Let your freak flag fly. Following the song, Donkey announces that he has a plan to stop the wedding and all of them take off to Duloc. We get to Duloc, the wedding is already happening, Shrek bursts in and tells Fiona that she can't marry him and expresses his true feelings with the song Big Bright Beautiful World Reprise. I don't have a fancy castle and I'm not sophisticated. A princess and an ogre, I admit, is complicated. Fiona tells everyone the truth, she transforms into an ogre, and then Farquaad starts screaming about how he's going to lock her in a tower for the rest of her days. That is whenever Donkey and Dragon pop in and take care of Farquaad. We get back to the reconciliation with the pretty lengthy finale song, which is mostly a duet between Shrek and Fiona, and then at the end, the entire company comes in. And unfortunately, I'm a Believer is not in the song list for the junior version during Bows. Overall, it is still a really fun show that, despite my frustrations, I would still happily direct with my middle school students. I do wish that they had paid a little more attention to some of those really important plot points and the characterization, especially for Shrek but I also understand that they had to cut about 60% of the full version to make this junior show work, so some difficult decisions had to be made. Feel free to leave any of your opinions in the comments section down below. Check out my other videos comparing full length to junior musicals. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, break a leg.